Question 26, a quarter plus a fifth plus a tenth. Now, there are a couple of different ways you could go about this. The first way, you could turn everything into decimals. The second way, you could turn everything into fractions with common denominators. So we will explore both of these possible methods. So first up, well, let's look at the decimals. Well, a quarter, if you imagine a whole pizza, a whole one split into four, you would have 0 0.25 in each quarter. So, because four lots of 0 0.25 would add up to a whole one. So a quarter is like 0 0.25. A fifth, you would actually have five pieces in the pizza. And if there's five pieces, you'd have 0 0.2 in each one. Split a whole one into five bits and you have 0 0.2. So a fifth is um, 0 0.2. And a tenth, we would actually have 10 pieces in the pizza. And each one, if you split a whole one into 10 pieces, you'd have 0 0.1 in each one. Like that, they'd all add up to one whole. 10 lots of 0 0.1 adds up to one whole. So, a quarter is 0 0.25, a fifth is 0 0.2, and a tenth is 0 0.1. So all you'd have to do then is add them together. Now, don't forget that when we're adding decimals together, obviously we've got our decimal points lined up. But what we do have is an empty gap here and an empty gap here. So we could just fill those in with zeros. And now we're ready to add them up. So 5 add nothing add nothing is 5. 2 add 2 add 1 is 5. 0 add 0 add 0 is 0. Put your decimal point in, 0 0.55. So one possible answer would be 0 0.55. But there is another answer which will be equivalent to 0 0.55, but will be in a fraction instead. So if we were going to look at the method that involves fractions with common denominators, then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write all the fractions out again. So we've got a quarter, add a fifth, add a tenth. Now we need to find a common denominator. So a common denominator means a number that 4... 5 and 10 will all divide into. Now, the, if, if you spend 20 seconds thinking about it, you might realise that 4, 5 and 10 all divide into 20. So we can make a common denominator of 20. 4 goes into 20, 5 goes into 20, 10 goes into 20. But what matters now is that we understand how we change each of the, those denominators into 20. Because we need to work out the numerators. So, to get from 4 to 20, we've times by 5. To get from 5 to 20, we've times by 4. To get from 10 to 20, we've times by 2. And whatever we've done to each of those denominators, we must also do the same to the numerators. So, on this first one, it was times 5. So, we need 1 times 5 will be 5. On the second one, we've done times by 4. So, 1 times 4 is 4. And on the third one, we times by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. So what we've actually got is 5 twentieths add 4 twentieths add 2 twentieths. Now, we're dealing with twentieths, so our answer would be out of 20. And then we've just got to do 5 plus 4 plus 2. It's like saying 5 oranges add 4 oranges add 2 oranges would be 11 oranges. 5 apples add 4 apples add 2 apples would be 11 apples. So 5 twentieths add 4 twentieths add 2 twentieths would be 11 twentieths. So 0 0.55 is an answer as a decimal, or 11 twentieths is an answer as a fraction with a common denominator. Just to prove to you that these two are actually equivalent, they do actually equal one another, let's look at what happens if we turn 11 twentieths into a decimal. Well, 11 twentieths, if you turn that into a fraction out of 100, you'd be timesing the 20 by 5, so you'd have to also times the 11 by 5. 11 times 5 is 55. 
and 55 hundredths is 0.55 as a decimal. So it does make sense when you think about it that these two answers are the same, 0.55 or 11 twentieths.